So today I'm going to focus on management techniques for private landowners and how to promote old growth within their forests. So a little history. Um, we're dealing with Massachusetts back before European settlement. So the state was 80 to 90 percent covered in old growth forests. Um, they were about over 200 years old, tall trees, dense forests, a lot of complexity within the environment. Then Europeans showed up and they cut down a lot of the trees, they were building ships, they just pretty much clear cut everything multiple times and just brought the land down to nothing. However, there were some parts that they couldn't get the machinery to, it was really complicated, up hills, by streams, stuff like that. So we have about less than 1% of our current forests are actually old growth. Um, and a lot of the land after farming and so forth, after the Industrial Revolution, just kind of was left abandoned. And a lot of the trees grew back up um, all at the same time. So we have a lot of the same age trees, just about 100 years old now. Um, and Massachusetts currently is about 60% uh, forested, or reforested, I should say. And so the focus is on what to do with this land and how to bring back some of the characteristics of these old growth forests. Um, almost two thirds of all the land today is owned by private landowners and not actually the state. So a lot of the management techniques are geared towards getting these individual landowners to know how to promote old growth and what exactly it is. Um, and you're dealing with almost, I think it's about 40,000 different landowners for this one state. Uh, so some of the characteristics for an old growth, we have large dead standing trees, which provide habitat for different birds and insects. You have large down trees, which also provide um, you know, habitat for like smaller animals on the ground and so forth. You have different age classes of trees. You have small ones, big ones, medium, but it's all varied. It's not the same. Unfortunately, we're dealing with all the same because they all grew back at the same time, about 100 years. And the final piece of the old growth forest are forest um, canopy gaps. So this is when you come into, you walk into the forest and you see the light going through and a big open area, that is a forest gap. Um, and these are really important because they provide the ability for little trees to come up that were shaded by the bigger trees and so forth. It gives a diversity within the forest. So the two basic management plans are passive and active. Passive, you wouldn't really do anything. You'd let Mother Nature do its work. You'd let um, ice storms and you know, hurricanes and so forth knock down trees, keep the forest rotating. It takes longer um, to get these like, characteristics going. Um, some trees live for 40 years, some live for 20. So it all depends, it varies. Um, the other option is to actively manage. And this would be going into clear cutting in small sections, not big sections, um, selective logging, so forth. You'd want to take down a couple trees, let them stay on the ground, you know, build up some habitat. You'd want to, you can uh, cut around the base to get rid of uh, the nutrients so it, the tree's still standing, but it's dead. Um, so you can kind of force some of these old uh, growth characteristics without actually waiting for them to happen. So the point of this is that by creating these characteristics, you create a complexity within your system. And this allows for more diversity of animals, um, and it's, it's to help promote what we used to have and what we don't have anymore. Um, economically, uh, timber harvesting within your own forest has been proven. There was actually a recent study that if you, clear, if you cut your forest harvesting once every 10 years, you're gonna get about $40 a year for your harvest. Done really, that's not very profitable. So I mean, aesthetically, who wouldn't want a nice forest in their backyard? Um, it's great for the environment. You could always use more trees. There's a lot of pavement around, if you notice, we're constantly building. Um, so it's one way, either actively or passively, to, to promote um, this old growth, what we used to have and what we don't have as much anymore. Granted, it could take a little while. We've got about 100 more years to go before it's technically considered old growth, but I think it's well worth it and uh, definitely can put some effort into kind of uh, simulating these characteristics. So remember, we've got large dead standing trees, we have down trees, we have forest gaps, and we have 
diverse tree age classes. So those are the four characteristics, and hopefully if you get a house someday with a forest in the backyard, you'll think about it, pass it on to your, your family, your friends, so it's a good thing. So, love trees.